BS Free Witchcraft is a production of the Nerd and Tie Podcast Network. Nerd and Tie produces podcasts ranging from actual play to true crime, and you can find more at nerdandtie.com or join our Discord by going to nerdandtie.com slash Discord. New developments now surrounding Arizona's big connection to last week's riot at the U.S. Capitol. Jacob Chansley, also known as the QAnon Shaman, or Jake Angeli, will be held in custody until his trial. He appeared by video conference earlier during another court hearing. He faces multiple felony and misdemeanor charges for his alleged role in the storming of the Capitol. Chansley's attorney tried to get him released on GPS monitoring, but the judge ordered the 33-year-old held in jail without bond. He will eventually be transferred to Washington, D.C. to stand trial there. Chancellor's mother attended the hearing and left quickly afterward. Are you surprised by the judge's decision? No. no Have you been able to talk to Jacob? What has he told you? Chancellor sat motionless through most of his detention hearing. He asked to speak at the end. The judge did not allow it. Now, what you just heard was a clip of the news from ABC 15 Arizona. Uh, from January 15th, 2021, and I'll link that clip in the show notes. But what this is, is BS Free Witchcraft, your monthly guide to the modern witchcraft movement, minus a lot of the usual, well, bullshit. I'm your host, Trey Dorn, and I... Man, January 6th happened. And I scrapped my entire script and everything I was going to do for this month's episode... Um, that I've been planning for a while because we need to talk about something from those January 6th riots and the attempted coup of the U.S. government. Because that's a thing we can say in the world now. But hey, at least I get to say former President Trump as a sentence. So that's... It's like exhaling. Anyways, in the attempt to, you know, keep Trump in power, one of the prominent people at those riots was a guy uh, named Jake Angeli, um, or is uh, legally Jacob Anthony Angeli Chansley, better known as the uh, QAnon shaman. Um, you can't miss him. He was walking around in animal skins, no shirt, and he had several prominent tattoos, and this is where we get onto our world a bit, because amongst those tattoos were some symbols associated with Norse paganism, like Mjolnir and Yggdrasil. And uh, it was... it was a lot. It was a lot. And while Angeli does not appear to be directly connected to um, any heathenist groups... Uh, he calls himself a shaman, he uh, espouses a lot of New Agey stuff, and some Christian stuff. He is clearly aligned with uh, white supremacists. And carrying those symbols while associated with white supremacists, he's been quickly condemned by the larger heathen community. Yeah, it's like the the Troth, and, which is an international heathen group, uh, released a statement condemning the the actions at the the Capitol and uh, making sure that people knew that we don't know this guy, we don't we don't know this guy. But you know, here's the thing, and and we need to talk about this. Because uh, while most heathens I've met in my lifetime have been wonderful people, and uh, I have, you know, most of them are not racist. Many of them are anti-racist. And there's a, I'll explain the difference of that maybe. But there's also a problem, and that is. Something that I noted on my list of topics for this show before I ever started. Before I started BS Free Witchcraft, I wrote down a list of, like, I, I wanted to make sure that I had at least a year's worth of shows in me before I launched a podcast, right? I wanted to make sure that, like, do I actually have enough to talk about to make sure this show goes? And so I came up with a list of topics. And one of the topics that I wrote down 
that I hadn't gotten to yet, but I wrote down when I started, was Norse paganism has a Nazi problem. And so we need to talk about that. Because Jake Angeli may be a face that we've seen on television, and he may not be a, a person who does a lot of witchcraft and maybe not part of the greater pagan community, um, but he's out there. He's He didn't come by this imagery on accident. All right? The association with white supremacists and... Um, Heathenry, Hisatru, and other forms of Norse paganism has been around for a while. And while I still, while, while they are not the majority within that movement, if you go into any sort of Nor Norse witchcraft and, and Norse paganism, you're going to encounter it. And it is a problem, and it is a problem that this community needs to address. Because this has gone on far too fucking long. All right. And if, if you want to understand what I mean, I mean the Southern Poverty Law Center, published in 1998... An article in, on March 15th, 1998, um, a headline, A racist brand of neopaganism related to Odinism spreads amongst white supremacists. And it was about how Asatru and other Norse paganisms were becoming popular with neo-Nazis and other anti-Semitic groups. All right? You see, what happened was is that <laughs> people, a bunch of racists who decided that, you know, hey, Christianity is not race, it's too inclusive, decided to start romanticizing Teutonic mythology and started to warp it. And it's just, it's become... It's become a problem. And it's not new. So Odinism, which is a specific form, is a more specific form of Norse paganism, was became very popular in Nazi Germany. With the Nordic and Teutonic mythology was um, a key in, in the Third Reich. Like it was a, a very bedrock belief for Third Reich leadership. And, um, an integral part of you know the uh, the cosm like the beliefs and the initiations of the elite Schusstaffel, which supervised uh, the death camps. And Odinism was a heavy influence on the the American Nazi Party. Now, people who practice Norse paganism know this. They know it's a problem um, because Nazis like to appropriate their imagery. Like They're fucking Nazis. They take stuff, they ruin it. It's what they do. And I can't even, like... So I don't have a script for this episode. Normally I have a script. Normally I have a plan. I've got an outline and I know where I'm going with everything I'm saying. But the fact is, I'm just so fucking tired of this. Like every single time as I go out and I look at sources and I want to do like, okay, so I'm a Wiccan. Yes, but my heritage is largely Scandinavian and Germanic. And so like when I go to look at the gods that my ancestors worshipped, that that where I came from, that's always my first source, right? Like, I've talked about Filga and things like that. Like, it, it, it comes from Norse stuff. Anyways, 
it's just so fucking frustrating because you're always having to walk through like you're walking on eggshells when you go into any sort of thing about Norse or Nordic like magic at all because there's always this chance that if you you have to look under the surface because it's just this edge and 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 and, and oh my god it's going to turn out to be some big fucking Nazi website that I'm on and it's the worst, or this author is going to end up having, like, and maybe they danced around it and used only dog whistles in the text, but then it turns out that they have Nazi sympathies. And it's like, it's this constant battle to try to look at, like, your own fucking stuff and, and, and having to avoid constantly, constantly avoid these fucking Nazis. And it's just, it's just so fucking... I'm earning my explicit flag this month. Um, like, and it doesn't, it doesn't end. Like, it just, it never, it never ends. Um, in 2017, in 2017, uh, oh, there's an, there's an article in 2017, um, and I'll link it in the the show notes uh, by Will Carlos, which is about like um, white supremacist Odinists who want to start a race war. Like it's there's like if you look at the the the, the in in Norway in 2011, the mass murder murders at a summer camp by um, in a in Oslo, Norway, by Anders Breivik. Um, <laughs> after he committed that mercy, it came out. He's an Odinist. Like, it's, here, here's here's the thing. If you see someone call themselves an Odinist, probably they're a Nazi. Like, maybe they're not, but the fact is, is that, like, the, the core of, of Odinism, um, like, they're fucking Nazis. All right. If you call yourself an Odinist and you don't think you're a Nazi, look at who the people around you are, because chances are you're hanging out with Nazis. All right. Um, and like normally, like you can say, like, you know, OK, you know, uh, the Satru, though, that's usually good. Right. It's usually good. Right. Normally, normally. But unless you accidentally like end up going to like the Asatru Folk Assembly, which is run by Nazis. And in fact, just in December 2020, um, Minnesota Town had to let them uh, come in because of concerns about religious violations. Because they rode the coattails of Asatru's legitimate religious... Um, <laughs> legitimate religious foundations. And so in Murdoch, Minnesota, um, fucking... Uh, this group of Nazis are uh, opening up a church in the name of Asatru, which is, again, Asatru itself is not. I'm probably maybe I'm even pronouncing that wrong. I don't know. I usually say heathenism. But most most Asatru are fine, are not racist. But the fact is that there's this church in their name being opened. And, like, it's not in a big town. Like, this is not, this is ongoing. This is real. This is every fucking day. This is, like, I don't, I don't, mmm, mmm, mmm. At Charlottesville, there were people who <laughs> walked around in the Charlottesville, the Charlottesville protest a couple years ago. Like, guys walked around with heathen symbols. Just this is this is a continuing problem. This is an ongoing, continuing problem in our community. All right? Odinism is bad. Just fuck it. 
Odinism is bad. We have a we have a massive problem. So if I will say to any witch who wants to get into like Norse mythology and all that stuff, great. I love it. Go for it. But fucking look out. You have to look out. Like if you're gonna walk around with um, a Mjolnir symbol, you have to understand that there are going to be Nazis who see you as an ally. And you're going to have to keep explaining it. And that sucks. And they don't get to take it from us. They don't get to take it from us. There's a... <sighs> on the Wild Hunt on uh, January 8th, um, Luke Babb published an opinion piece that says heathenry must become an anti-racist religion. Being anti-racist is different than being not racist. Being not racist is neutral, right? Like, um, in in the sense that, you know, racism, which you don't, systemic racism exists, and you don't always have to be purposely racist to actually be racist. But to not be racist is usually what most people aspire to, right? Like, I'm, I'm not going to act in a racist way. I understand that society works. That being anti-racist is directly fighting racism. And, um... It's it's so fucking important, guys. Like, we need to make Norris, uh, the, the heathen, heathen community, and even those of us who like, who practice some sort of, of of magic based on Norse mythology or anything like that, we need to actively, actively, we need to actively make the idea of, of Norse mythology become an active symbol against white supremacy. It needs to become an org it needs to become a community that is actively fighting it. Because the fact is, is that I don't walk out in public with a lot of Norse imagery on me ever, even though it's like a core part of my witchcraft practice. And it's like I don't want to be associated with these people, and I don't want to let them claim these symbols, but it's also like, Jesus, man, like, I've got to live. I've got to survive. But the opposite of racism is not inclusion, it's anti-racism. Um, you need to get involved. Um, as... As Luke Babb says in their opinion piece on the Wild Hunt, uh, we can donate to community organizations who support people of color, join local chapters of anti-racist groups, and continue educating ourselves. But whatever we do, we need to talk about our actions and encourage our religious communities to get involved in those actions. We need to make it clear that we stand for something and that we are working on behalf of those values constantly, that they are inseparable from the religion that we love. Heathenry is a religion of action. We have to do something. And I know that not everyone who listens to this is gonna is a heathen or practices heathenry or is even religious in their witchcraft. But it's important that this message gets spread far and wide. There are no Nazis in Valhalla. Period. I'm going to read a poem by my friend Lee now that they wrote in the wake of things. There are bears in the woods. There are fish in the sea. There are worms in the dirt and birds in the trees. There are no Nazis in Valhalla. There are mosses on logs and crawdads in creeks. 
There are stars in her eyes and freckles on her cheeks. But there are no Nazis in Valhalla. There are snails in the garden and seashells on the shore. Peaches with hard pits, apples with soft cores. And no Nazis in Valhalla. Birds have feathers and fish have their scales. Forests have rodents and the ocean has whales. But no Nazis in Valhalla! There are no Nazis in Valhalla. There are no Nazis in Valhalla. From Nidogr, Nazis run. There are no Nazis in Valhalla. Not even one. None. Thank you guys for tuning in to another month of BS Free Witchcraft. I know this is not really a long episode, but I had a lot to get off my chest and uh, only was able to organize my thoughts so much because um, <laughs> you know, uh, this stuff this stuff just happens. Um, Jesus. Remember, you can remember. Try to remember the kind of September. Oh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of editing on this one. Holy shit, guys. Uh, you have no idea how much I cut out. Um, Sorry, this was a shorter episode. I know that uh, a lot of you, um, a lot of you guys, come for me maybe for something calmer than this, but I, it's something I had to get off my chest. Uh, remember, you can always sponsor this show on Patreon, and uh, by sponsoring on Patreon, you get access to these episodes a week early. You could have listened to me yell about this like a whole week earlier if you'd even joined at the $1 level. I would like to shout out uh, the contributors at our $10 level of uh, Celeste Wolf, Stephanie Graves, Mary Stowell, Lindsay Dosey, and Bruce Norville. And if, you know, I understand it's the pandemic and the world is on, well, the world's a little less on fire than it was before, but it's still on the world. It's, there's, a, yeah, it, <laughs> It's on fire. Like, I, it's on, the world's still on fire. So I understand if you can't afford to contribute, but if, uh, please consider then at least uh, following the show on social media. I'm on Twitter at T R A E G O R N. I'm on Tumblr at uh, T R A E G O R N dot Tumblr dot com. And uh, I'm on Facebook at Facebook.com slash BS Oh, yeah. I forgot to actually tell you the uh, Patreon URL. The Patreon URL is patreon.com slash T-R-A-E-G-O-R-N. Um, and also, if you, if you can't give it to the Patreon, also cool, but consider leaving a rating and review in um, places like iTunes, um, like because that actually like, really helps us on the, the metrics. That really helps the show on, like algorithmically in these things. So, like, dude, consider it. I'd love it. I'll be your best friend. Um, <laughs> uh, remember that we are a part of the uh, Nerd and Tie podcast network, um, which you can find more information at nerdandtie.com. And again, you can find all the subscription links for the show at nerdandtie.com slash BS for Witchcraft or at BS for Witchcraft.com. Nerd and Tie podcast network is a fun, geeky network of a lot of different shows. And uh, we've got this great community on Discord where you can talk to any of us who host shows like we be me, be uh, Brina Garen of Hex Positive, be like all sorts of people. Um, and you can find an invite to the, our Discord and community at uh, nerdandtie.com slash Discord, which will redirect you to an invite. Um, you know, around the Nerd and Tie Network, there are other shows you should check out. Uh, a new uh, limited series is premiering on February 1st. Um, called The Meat Grinder, which is a comedic um, actual play show. Um, so it's 
like a D&D podcast, but it's, we're using super awesome action heroes. It's set in the same world as Stormwood and Associates, the normal actual play show that I do. But it is um, it is a nine-episode series. Uh, the first three episodes are going to go up in February, and then each new episode, the, the rest of the new episodes will go up on the 15th of the month after that. Um, it's nine episodes long, and um, effectively, uh, it's... I'm, I, I GM a game where I try to where we literally try to kill the players as frequently as possible. Um, all the players knew this going in and literally all made multiple characters. And so uh, it's called the Meat Grinder, and you can find more information on that at nerdandtie.com slash meat grinder. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, it's very funny. At least I think it is. Um, and I, you know, that's life, man. Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in yet again, Majikins. Um, I'm not even going to make it. We'll talk about next month. Uh, whatever we talk about next month. I've got like five episodes. I have, I literally have like two or three episodes that I keep delaying. There's an episode that I like had like 80% done for November that I ended up... That was going to be moved now because the you know the craft legacy came out and then like but now i don't know maybe i'll do that one next who knows i'm not going to tell you what it is so whatever i do next month that was on purpose and planned yeah all right thank you guys so much for tuning in i love you <laughs>